Hi everyone. So this Orion 8-inch f3.9 Newtonian reflector has been my primary imaging telescope for a couple of years now and I've gotten some phenomenal images with it. However, there's always room for improvement. So today I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to get the most out of your Newtonian reflector telescope for astrophotography. So number one is to adjust or improve the focuser on this telescope. I haven't upgraded the focuser on this one. This is the original focuser that comes with this telescope. So I'm going to demonstrate using a backup telescope that I have over here, just because I don't want to mess with this focuser. I've got it tuned just right. So let's uh, take a look at the focuser on the decoy scope behind me. The challenge with basic focusers like this is that when you have your telescope in imaging configuration on top of your mount, most of the time you have the telescope like this and you have a heavy camera attached to it, maybe a coma corrector. And when you're adjusting the focus, this is how it goes. So the draw tube goes in and out. But if your focuser is, is not very strong or it's not adjusted properly, this is the challenge you are going to run into. Now, while you're trying to adjust this, your draw tube might not have enough tension uh, to, to hold the camera in one place. So it's hard to get precise focus in that case. Uh, the adjustment to fix that is actually quite easy. All you have to do is increase the tension on the four outer screws. Uh, so uh, yours might look slightly different, but on any Skywatcher or Ion or sometimes Celestron focusers, uh, it's usually the four outer screws that need to be tensioned. And usually you need an Allen key, but since I had replaced mine uh, for, with longer screws that screw into this bracket, I'm just gonna use a regular screwdriver. So just gently tighten these ones a little bit, just a very little bit, and just the four outer screws. And that should improve the tension on the draw tube. Now, it has no problem moving this heavy camera. And if I hold this and I try to move the camera in and out, it's, it's staying in one place. The draw tube is not slipping at all. So that should allow you to get more accurate focus. Now, if that doesn't resolve your problem and you find your camera setup is still too heavy for the default focuser that, uh, that came with your telescope, um, then the next option is to upgrade your focuser. And upgrading the focuser on your budget telescope is probably one of the best uh, best use of budget that, that you can do to improve your telescope. And if you have um, an Orion or an older Skywatcher telescope. Uh, I've put a link to a focuser uh, in the description of this video that should be a drop-in replacement for all of these ones. And uh, that should, should definitely do a much better job than the default built-in focusers that come with these telescopes. Now, one of the other issues with the budget focusers that come with a lot of these telescopes um, is that they usually do not have a compression ring uh, in this part that holds uh, your camera. So these screws end up digging into whatever they're attaching, either the, the tube over here or your coma corrector. And also they don't provide a very stable connection. So uh, if you do upgrade your focuser, then all the better focusers have a built-in compression ring. So the force is spread all around instead of just on these two points where these screws are. Also, the better focusers come with a completely blackened uh, draw tube inside as opposed to silver, which causes internal reflections in most cases. Uh, so those are the two major uh, upgrades and also just the build quality is usually much better, uh, for example, on the one that I've linked in the description below. Tip number two is to install a dew heater for your secondary mirror. On my telescope, one of the issues that I had noticed was that my secondary mirror would dew up on nights that uh, had high humidity. So at the back of my secondary mirror of my Newtonian reflector, I installed a Kendrick dew heater uh, for secondary mirrors. And then uh, in the kit was supplied some metallic tape that I ran along uh, one of the spider veins to minimize diffraction issues. And then I drilled a hole right through my tube. 
So I drilled a hole right through my tube over here and I installed an RCA jack on the other side. And then I, I painted the metallic tape uh, black on the inside uh, just to avoid any reflection issues. And since then I've not had any issues with dew at all. So this is a slightly uh, expensive upgrade, but if you do image from any place, where there is dew, it's definitely worth it. Uh, and again, I've put a link to the Kendrick Astro Dew Heater page uh, down in the description of this video. And uh, you might also be wondering if you need a dew heater for the primary mirror of your telescope. I've never encountered any issues with uh, dew on any of my primary mirrors while imaging. So on Newtonian reflectors, it's mainly the secondary mirror that's exposed closer to the front of the telescope. So installing a dew heater on that can be a fairly significant upgrade. Next tip is to flock your telescope and also darken the inside of the telescope. Uh, to do that, I bought some flocking paper, which as you can see over here is very, very dark. It almost looks like velvet. And I've posted a link to that in the description below as well. This is sticky adhesive flocking paper. So you just peel off the back and just stick it. Uh, inside. You can also use paint, but I find paint can be a little bit messier and often paint can be fairly reflective. So I found flocking paper to do a better job. And if there are any other areas where I see any internal reflections on the inside, um, I will blacken those as well. One of the areas that I already blackened in my telescope is the back of the, or sorry, the edge of the secondary mirror. In some cases, the back of your secondary mirror uh, might be unpainted as well. It might be silver uh, or uh, glass colored instead of black. In that case, you can take a marker, a, a thick Sharpie, and just, just run that over and just paint it black. Now, a Sharpie uh, might still be a little bit reflective in the end, but it, it would still be a huge improvement over the unpainted glass at the back and the edges of the secondary mirror. And of course, uh, it goes without saying that you don't want to get any paint or any of that Sharpie uh, on the actual silver surface of the front of the secondary mirror. So as you can see on the sides, the edges of mine are already black. Also, at the edges where the spider vein attaches to the, to the uh, tube, um, I also used a Sharpie to darken that because I noticed some light reflecting off that. And any other internal screws, I also painted them black using a Sharpie. And the very bottom of the draw tube. So, uh, there we go. So the very bottom of the draw tube as well, as you can see, I used a Sharpie to paint that black. Uh, now, if you look inside, you can see two lines that are still silver going downwards on the draw tube that I did not paint. That's so that the rollers inside the focuser uh, don't run over the paint if I ever have to take the entire draw tube out. Uh, so you'll see two um, or three marks on the side uh, of the draw tube at 120 degrees. And uh, you just want to leave those unpainted so that the roller bearings on the side of the focuser can run on them. Uh, and you don't need to paint the entire draw tube. For example, I haven't painted any of this region up at the top, only the area that sticks into the tube uh, when you are at focus. Okay, so now that is done. I'll use this side. Okay, so let's see how it fits inside. Hopefully get this back in there. And then just use your hand to press it down in there. So that side is done and I'll just do the other side here as well. Now it is harder to tell just how much darker that velvety paper is than the regular paint job there. But looking at it here in real life, I can definitely see a massive difference. Okay, so as you can see in there, almost all of it has been flocked and blackened all around inside. The next tip is to mask your primary mirror. Now, if you're wondering why you would want to do that, two primary reasons. One, the mirror in a Newtonian reflector is generally held together by these three little black clips. 
And what those three clips do is that um, in your images, if there is any sort of bright star, you can see these weird diffraction artifacts, these three lines emanating from the outer halo of that bright star. And by removing those three clips and replacing them with an aperture mask, it ends up getting rid of that. Also, the outer edge of your primary mirror in a Newtonian reflector is usually not perfect, so that results in this flaring around any bright stars. And to make the stars look cleaner, uh, you can mask out the outer couple of millimeters of the primary mirror. That might reduce your light by an imperceptible amount, but it will definitely improve the shape of your stars. So I recently purchased one of these aperture mask rings and I've put a link to this in the description below as well and this uh, ring is going to mask out the very very outer part of my primary mirror this has this sticky paper attached to it so I will just peel that off so first thing you want to do is to mark the position the current position of your primary mirror relative to the tube now what you want to do is take a screwdriver and remove these screws around the base of the tube that are holding the mirror and the tube together. Okay, so all the screws are now off. So all I need to do now, make sure I have a clear work area and just lift this tube off and expose the primary mirror. Here we go. And you want to be very careful in this part. Make sure your tube is stable wherever it is so your telescope's not gonna fall off. And make sure your mirror is on a nice solid surface. Now that I've got the screws out, these ones over here. So uh, I'm going to take out this metal portion that is on top. So take out the screws, this metal portion Put that aside. Now I take this uh, portion over here, take this off, okay this is the ring. So one side of it is nice matte black, the other side of it here is pretty shiny. So I'm going to put the shiny side facing down because that side is hidden and then the matte side is facing upwards. Okay, so when I do this, what I'm noticing is that the inner plastic piece is sticking out a tiny bit in front of the ring. See, there you go, you can see it's sticking out. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm going to have to cut back that piece a little bit. So I very, very gently tighten the clips until they're, they're just touching. So the foam piece is touching the mirror now. And now that that's done, now I'm going to loosen the screws a little bit so the foam piece is no longer touching. Some people like to use a credit card or a piece of paper and they stick it underneath to see if the clips are loose enough. I don't like to do that personally. I don't want to scratch the mirror with a cardboard or a business card. So once I've um, had everything touching the mirror there, now I'm just going to go loosen it a very tiny bit. There you go. So loosen it enough so that you can see this foam piece move easily. So it's not holding the mirror in place. So they are just there that if the mirror does fall out of here, the clips will catch it. They will stop that from happening. Yep, so that's pretty good. That mirror is not going to fall. So the next tip is to block any light leaks that our telescope might have. And on Newtonian reflectors, the most common 
a place where light gets in where it shouldn't. So it's, it's the back of the telescope behind the primary mirror. It's uh, not painted usually. This is what it looks like at the back. So it's pretty much uh, unpainted glass. And you want to block the light from getting in. And this step is best done while the mirror is still, uh, is still disassembled or is still uh, separated from the telescope. Uh, now to accomplish this task, I was previously using a little piece of cardboard behind my telescope to prevent the light from going in, but it didn't look great and it wasn't very sturdy and sometimes it would fall off. So I ended up buying one of these. So this is, uh, I got this from the same place that I had gotten this top masking ring for my primary mirror. Uh, so I'll put a link to this in the description below as well. So this is, uh, it's it's supposed to be sized for Sinta telescopes, which is generally Skywatcher, Celestron, those kinds of Newtonian reflectors. But what I found was that on my Orion 8-inch f3.9 telescope, the holes were a little bit too close together. So I did have to modify this a little bit. I used a Dremel tool just to extend the holes a little bit inwards. And I also ended up spray painting the inside of it black. It doesn't really matter uh, because uh, this is going to be behind the mirror on the inside, so you won't get any light in, light coming in from the back anyway. But um, I just I I had it out, so I decided to while I was cutting these holes or making these holes a little bit larger, I decided to spray paint it black as well. I have already removed uh, the mirror here from its uh, from its big holder. I took out the three springs, these little ones here that are sitting inside these grooves. I've also taken out the uh, collimation locking screws and the actual collimation nuts at the back of the mirror. And all I need to do now to install this is just put it right in there like that. So um, now all I do is take these little springs and I put them right in here where these holes are. Okay, so the mirror is in. I will take these, these little uh, knobs that go behind the mirror uh, that's this one over here. Okay, so I don't want to tighten everything down too much just yet because I also have to put these locking screws in. So that's locked in. This is what it looks like along the back now. You can see the collimating screws, locking screws. And now we can uh, put the telescope back together now that that is done, so. Now I'm going to tighten alternating screws. So one on this side, one on the opposite side, then this side, then the opposite side. So that way I can make sure that the tube is properly aligned to the bottom. And now you can make sure everything is pretty tight. Now the last part is to make sure that our telescope is properly collimated. You can do that using one of these Cheshire sight tubes. You look through the top over here, the little hole, and uh, this part just goes right in like an eyepiece, so you could use that. You can uh, collimate using a collimated laser collimator. And I explain how to collimate your laser collimator in one of my other videos that I have linked in the description below. And that makes it very, very accurate. And lastly, you can use a tool such as the OCAL, which I've also linked in the, uh, in the description below, uh, the newer version of this OCAL actually. This is the original version. And I've also used this to, uh, with, with great success. Uh, so any of these methods can be used for collimating, but I always recommend doing the final collimation under the stars uh, just to just to test and make sure 
that all of your tools work properly and if there are any tweaks that need to be made you can do that uh, afterwards um, now if by collimating alone you're not getting great stars at the very edges then one of the issues could also be sensor tilt in your camera so that is something that can be corrected using either a tilt adjuster or if your camera has a built-in tilt adjuster for example the ASI 2600 series uh, then you can just use that and you don't need an external tilt adjuster so again thank you very much for watching and if you found this helpful consider hitting like and subscribe and you can also follow me on instagram at abdur astro as well as on facebook at the real abdur astro thanks again and clear skies